Hello everyone today i am present before you with the podcast on kublagan composed by samuel taylor college before i begin the podcast it is advisable that you keep a notebook and a pen so that you can note down the important points and can further development into your own notes before we get into the poem let's know about samuel taylor college Samuel Taylor Coleridge a leader of the British romantic movement was born on October 21 1772 in Devonshire England his father a vicar of a parish and master of a grammar school married twice and had four children the youngest child in the family Coleridge was a student at his father's school and an avid reader after his father died in 1781 Coleridge attended Christ Hospital School in London where he met lifelong friend Charles Lamb while in London he also befriended a classmate named Tom Evans who introduced Coleridge to his family Coleridge fell in love with Tom's old sister Here I begin in Exenodu did Kublagan a stately placed dom degree where all these scattered river they ran through currents measureless to man down to a sunless sea so twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were gridled ground and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense bearing tree and here were forest ancient as the hills enfolding sunny spots of greenery In the first stanza the poet in a dream or in imagination sees Kuplagon in his capital city Exenadu commenting from his luxurious palace dam the river of alp flows through the vast chambers and covering huge distance mixes into this sea where there is no sunlight The capital of Kublagan is about 10 square kilometers with fertile land which is surrounded by walls and towers protecting it. There are beautiful gardens through which a streamlet flows in a curved manner and along the streamlet there are trees and plants having a sweet fragrance. There are forest which are as old as the hills and are covered with green plants over which sunlight is falling in the first stanza it is the creativity of kublagan it is the first level of imagination stanza 2 but ho oh, the deep romantic chasm which is slanted down the green hill at what a garden cover a savage place as holy and enchanted as a beneath a waning moon was haunted by women wailing for her demon lover and from this church with christless tomorial seating as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing a mighty fountain momently was forced a mid whose swift half intermeted burst huge fragments valued like rebounding heart or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail and mid these dancing rocks and once and ever it flung up momently this scared river five miles meandering with a mazy motion through wood and dale this scared river ran then reached the curvens measureless to man and sank in tumulate to a lifeless ocean on mid this tumulate kupla heard from fair ancestral voices proposing war in the second stanza creativity moves to a deeper level of imagination the poet describes the divine creativity there is a sloping hill with green plants across which there is a chasm or a deep gap covered with mosses it is 
a wild and holy as the love of a woman who under the decreasing moon is crying for her supernatural lover in this chasm or gap there is an unending disturbance it seems that earth is breathing angrily and through the gap water is coming out with great force and then falling down there is thus a duality of the moment with the water huge stones are thrown out on either side of the chasm which covers the gap amidst these stones the holy river comes out and flows through the woods and the valley in a zigzag way the river reaching the worst chambers ultimately sinks with noise into the silent sea stands of three the shadow of the dumb of pleasure floated midway on the waves where was here the mingled measure from the fountain and the curves it was a miracle of rare device a sunny pleasure dome with curves of ice now in the third stanza the creativity moves into the third or deepest level of imagination where human creativity and divine creativity are combined and as a result of its artifacts is made it should be also noted that in stanza 1 it is the creativity of kubla khan in the second stanza it is the divine creativity and in the third third stanza it is the creativity of the poet while hearing the noise of the river falling into the silent sea kupla gaon hears the voice of his dead ancestors who predict and foretell the future war the said of luxurious palace dumb floats in the air where a combination of the noise of fountain and silence of cave is heard the poet calls it a miracle of a rare device which is really true because of sunny dawn and eyes cannot coexist it is thus the impulse of creativity which makes the contradictory things like sun and eyes dark and bright flat or clearly silent and sound to exist together stands of four a damsel with a dark shimmer in a vision once i saw it was an abyssinian maid and on her dark shimmer she played singing of mount abora could i review within me her symphony and song to such a deep delight would win me that with music loud and long i would pull that dome in air that sunny dome those curves of eyes and all who heard should see them there and all should cry beware beware his flashing eyes his floating hair wave a circle round him thrice and close your eyes with holy dread for he won honey new head fit and drank him milk of paradise In the fourth stanza the poet in a dream sees a dames who is playing the dulcimer sees from the black grace of africa and probably from ethiopia she is playing the dulcimer and singing for mount abora probably means the river of akbara which joins the river nile the poet the poet by saying could i review in me her symphony on sound expresses the superiority of damsel and in spite of being a european he praises a non european the poet wishes that if he could have the skills of symphony and music of that damsel he would have built that dam like that precious dam of kupla khan in the air with curves of ice and thus he would have constructed some impossible artifact the audience on seeing him 
doing so would pay attention to his acts they would then appreciate his attractive eyes and beautiful hair they would then weave a circle thrice around him they would appreciate his poetry by reading it three times each time going to a deeper level and at this instance there would be thing whirling suspension of disbelief